Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And today, if I've got this right, should be August the 2nd, 2023. And that means that I'm now announcing the colour combo for August. Now, the colour combo is something that's run within a Facebook group, which is run by PM Artist Studio. Basically, subscribers... Um, send myself and Paola Keen um, requests for different colour combinations. We then make a list of them throughout the year, once a month. We put them onto the Makers Group, which I will put a link to the Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artist Group on Facebook. I'll put the link in the description box. There's, I believe, three questions you've got to answer to get in. Really easy, don't fret about it, no problem. And then the members actually do whatever they wish with those colours. They can use paint, glass, ceramic, fabric, whatever they wish. So it's interesting to see what they'd come up with. So as I said, this is a group, that's where we announce them. Um, and each each month I, I launch it by doing a video, and this is the video. So now, I'm one of the designers for PM Artist Studio, and so is Paola Keen. Um, what I'm going to do is, once I've finished this, if you look down in the description box, there will be a list of my products, which are actually on their website. And you can, you'll find any that I've used within this video. Um, also, look out in the description box. I'll put a discount code in there as well. So if you use that discount code, I might show it to you at the end of the video if I remember. Um, then you'll get 10% on any order over, I think it's $35. Um, and 10% is 10%. Let's not knock that. So, right, what are we doing? What are the colours this, this month? Okay, the requested colours are cream. Well, this is as close to cream as I've got, which is a matte pastel yellow. So to me, I'm using that as cream because I don't really want people to spend more money on paint than if they've got paint in their stash. Use it if you can. Um, next colour is ivory. I've got this old ivory paint. It's called old ivory. It doesn't mean it is old ivory. Um, so those are the two colours. Now, this month's theme is more neutrals, and I'll tell you more about that as we go along. So now, the rules or guidelines are, those are the requested colours, but you are allowed to add white, black, and a metallic. And I must admit, I'm going to cheat this month. I'm adding two metallics because... I just feel I need to. It's This is a for fun project each month. It's not a challenge. No one's going to come around with the colour police to find you and say you've done it wrong. It's purely just to help us think outside the box, maybe create outside the box. So what am I doing this, this month? Um, I've got my um, 9x12 gel plate out. And I've got my 5x7 gel plate out because those who know me know I will use this as a palette and I'll use this to pull prints from. And I'm also using my Speedball 4 inch brayer and I've got a brayer off sheet over there. And I've got a bit of tissue over there for cleanup. Now, Paula and I have got this little project we are personally doing. This isn't for anyone else to do unless you, you've got a friend you want to do this with. For, um, but every month I want to try and do something with these colour combos. So, Paula suggested that we each make um, pages for a journal. Then I will send the pages I create to Paula. Paula will create pages and send them to me. And then we will go ahead and make our pages that we've received into a journal. So, um, let's see, probably in about a week's time, you'll see a video where I'll make the cover. And then I'll sew it all together. You'll see what it is. So I chose, um, we're doing 15 pages each. So I've got 15 pages of coffee dye paper. It might be tea dye paper looking at some of this. Or a combination of both. I thought this is a good base for the neutrals. So I'm literally going to do painted techniques on the edges, the spines, whatever. To make these one coherent signature. Which will then get sewn into a journal. So Paula's really excited and I'm really excited. It's just a little project for ourselves. But if you've got a friend who wants to do the same thing, by all means, I think it's a fun thing to do. So I need to start creating something on here of interest. So a lot of this may become very repetitious because I've got 15 pages, which is 30 sides of paper to work on. Now, not every page is going to have something on it and not every side is going to be finished because... I don't know. Paula may want to add flips to her. She may want to put pockets in it. I'm creating this as sort of a naked journal with painted uh, 
um, elements on it because I like journalists to be writing journals and embellished should you wish to embellish them. Anyway, let me get on with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my larger plate to the top and I'm going to bring my smaller plate in it in a bit and what I want to do is I want to actually stamp I'm going to use some of my own foam stamps please forgive me if I get the the names of the stamps wrong I'm not great at remembering it's sad isn't it it's my own product and I can't remember what the names are so I want to stab bits of st stamp sorry not stab it's a bad day people stamp bits of elements into the background on this so I'm bringing in a few of my um stamps um I would say that's coded mesh or coded grid. That might be, you'll see. I think that's regimented rectangles. I can't remember what circles that is. And I bought the numbers one in because I love this numbers one. I think that might be one of the later ones I do. Not sure I'm going to be using this one, but you never know. So I'm going to come in first of all, and I'm going to just put elements in because it's still about creating layers. So first of all, I'm going to actually just start with gold and I think I'm going to pull these two out to use with the gold. Now the gold I'm using is the Rich Iridescent Gold by PBO. It, why am I shaking the tube? Um, it's, not, it's not a fully opaque which is one of the reasons I wanted to add it because that way I can actually have a little bit in the background. So let's put the clean sheets over to one side and just come in. Now there is no way in heck I'm going to keep from having paint on both sides or fingerprints or stuff but that I hope will just make it eclectic and interesting. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to grab pieces here and there just so there's stuff on here. Then I'm just going to put that to one side and grab the next one. So I'll do probably half of them with this design now, I've got to remember when they're in the signature, I won't see the opposing sides. So this is just a quick way. Now, you could be doing this with rubber stamps. You could do this with clear stamps. You could do this with mark making tools. You don't need to be using foam stamps for this. It's, it's up to you what you wish to use. And as I said, I'm going to be building up layers and layers of interest but as the page is actually the background in the journal I don't want to um, make it that the stamping is the feature. I'm also keeping it vertical and horizontal only because that's just basically the way I like to work. So, so I might if I feel like it speed up sections of this but I do know you guys don't like speeding up. So, well, some of you, some of you don't. Um, I personally like to leave you with the option as to whether you speed things up or not, because you're in control of the buttons, guys. So, so hopefully you're all doing well. Here in Wales, it's a miserable wet day and I'm not loving it out there. Um, I just drove back from Bracknell from seeing friends this morning, so I left at about 7 o'clock this morning for a two-hour drive. So if I'm a little caffeine depleted, because I haven't had a chance to stop for coffee, that will probably explain um, the fact that I probably can't string a sentence together this morning. Um, if you see these patches in the middle where it's not actually stamped through, that's my fault because when I put a stamp down, I normally walk my fingers around it and you get it in the middle. But I've just been lazy. I haven't haven't done that. Right, we're getting to the point where the gold is beginning to dry up on on this plate. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to waste it, I'm going to actually pick that up on another page. We'll deal with the stamp in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and pick pieces of the gold up on the edges of the pages so that there's some theme going through this. Let's do it from this side. See gold will be one of the background colours on each of the pages and I know 15 pages is is a bit of a request as far as how many to do but to be honest with you whenever I do a single single signature journal 
it's usually 15 pages. So see, we're just building up something in the background and that could be all that it needs. Right, now when I've got a stamp that I've used with paint, I will lay it on a damp cloth just to keep it moist so that it doesn't dry out on me. Um, and then the paint will set. So what I'll be doing is once I've finished with the gold, which is not far off, um, I will be pausing you so I can then go and um, wash, the, wash the stamps so I don't end up with problems of them drying out on me. I see a lot of stamp that in the middle. Let's pick up some in the middle. There you go. So, yes, there's, there's going to be quite a few interesting things this month, I feel. Um, Obviously, I'm doing this today. However, as I said, I will be doing um, a cover for the pages that Paola will be sending me, which will, which will be another video. And I think in that video, what I'll do is I will make the cover and I will attach um, her signature to it all in the same video. So you won't have to be searching around for lots of other videos. Um, I will also link this video to that one and that vi video to this one when when the other video has launched, because obviously I can't link a video that's not been listed. So, and then I've got another little project I'm going to do. There's, um, there's another thing makers do. They've got like a, a theme for each month. And the theme for August is, I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but it's something along the lines of oceans and sea and that lot. So and I like the ocean, I like the sea, so I'm going to be doing that. And I think I'm going to do a textured canvas for you guys. Not something I normally do, and I don't know that I've done a textured canvas on screen before. In fact, have I done... Yeah, I've done one for myself, but I think what I want to do is I want to take you through the stages. It may work, it may not work the way I'm thinking of doing it, so I don't actually know. Let's bring up the remainder of that on there. Just getting some bits. See, I'm just putting bits of interest onto the pages. What I'll do is once I've finished um, with the gold, I will clean up a bit, put you on pause, and then we'll look at where the gold is, and I'll do that with each of the stages, I think. This is quite a quick way to actually just um, put interest on stuff just in the background. Of course, there's still writing space on these pages. If you want, you could still write with um, a gel pen or a permanent pen because when the paint has dried, you can write on top of it with um, most markers and stuff like that. So, or gel pens. I know gel pens work over the top as well. So, as I said, I don't actually know what Paula is intending on doing with these. It could be that she's going to put pockets and tags and other journaling space in it that I'm unaware of. And I don't know what I'm receiving from Paula, which I think is exciting. Um, so, that's what I like. It, is, it isn't a challenge, but it's a little bit of a challenge because we're doing something with each other. Right, just that last little bit. Just pick that up onto something, just make this page look a little more interesting than it was before. Right, so give me two seconds break guys, and what I'll do is I'll clean up the decks here a bit, I'll come back, those, those foam stamps will have been washed then, and then we can go on to the next stage, but I will show you before we start the next stage what we've achieved in this one. So here I'm back again, all nice and cleaned up. Now we're going to go through these and I'm going to go through them between each colour for a specific reason. Because there may be some that I look at and go, you know what, that's finished for the time being and take it out of the equation. Because I don't want every single page to be that crusted in paint that you can't do anything with them. Like this one has got a nice border down there, a little bit on there, that needs more work. This one, a couple of squares and a square, that needs more work. That needs more work. This one, however, because it's got quite a bit of gold on it, I think that one's probably done. That might be something to get something later on. So again, that's quite empty. 
That's getting there, not quite though. That one's getting there. This one's got bits and now you must remember each of these is going to be folded in half. So what you're seeing is only half of the design. I'm thinking I want to leave that one because I think that one's getting okay. This to me looks like it's well on the way. As is this one. See that's okay because once this is folded in half there'll only be that much on there so maybe I'll stamp numbers or something on that one. I think that will be okay. Now this one looks like it may need something. See I like that because once that's folded in half it'll just create a margin down the page but I do feel that needs a little more in there. This one I think possibly is ready to go into the pile to be left for later. As I think is that one. And I think that one is as well. Right. Now I'm going to move on to the pages that um, I didn't select out and I'm going to put on, um, I'm going to put some white onto these and I'm putting white onto them because A, I'm allowed to, but B, it means that it'll lighten up the pages a little bit. So I'm just using an acrylic paint. It's, it's a fully opaque paint. And I'm going to use my kissing technique to put the interest onto the pages so that therefore they've just got patches on, on them of, of white. So just come in. I don't need a perfect coating on my gel plate. I just need something on here. That's enough. And then what I'll do is I'll look at the areas where there's nothing and go, right, let's just tap that down and see, just pick up pieces of it. Now, what Paolo's going to do with this, I am not certain, but I know it's going to be interesting. She's a very talented lady, is our Paola. So, again, this side looks like it needs something. Just bits, and these white will then become backgrounds for maybe the ivory or maybe the copper, something like that. Let's put this to one side because I'm finding it hard to pick them up over there. So again, just patches of interest. Like this doesn't have much at all on it, so I'm good as I'm going to come and rub it down the middle, and that's just added a bit there. It's getting time to almost refresh the page. Now uh, you can stop at any point you wish. Well, you can start and stop at any point you wish because it's your art, your way. There is no right way or wrong way to do this. This is just my interpretation of what I want to do with this. Um, so be aware that you can do what you want, guys. Just, and I'm using this color scheme. If you don't want to do the color combo, just think about, can I utilize this with other color schemes that I might have about? And you might well have. I think if I put some across the top of there, I'll be happy. Maybe a little bit along the bottom and a bit on the back there. That's a little bit. So as with most things I do, it is all about building layers. Um, it's what I enjoy most about mixed media. It's, it's pretty much what I enjoy most about paint, um, art in general, I think, is it's the amount of layers I can put into stuff. Right, that one definitely needs something on it. A little bit. Now, if it goes over the gold, I don't mind because what that's doing is it's pushing that gold into the background. Let's give that a little bit of rub there because lift that off there. I think I need a little bit more. I want the edge of this one done. Something I am trying not to do is you see there's a line of paint there where I've lifted, I've put the brayer on, or I have lifted off a previous layer. I don't want that translating on here. What I like is these softer edges where the paint has been. If I pick that edge up, I then have a sharp line on there and I kind of don't want that. Right. I think I'm just going to bring in my piece of cleanup tissue because 
I'll clean that off here. Everything you see me clean off with tissue paper is going to be made into um, collage stuff. I tend to use my tissue papers for collage. This is something called carnival tissue paper, which I get here in the UK, and it's a water resistant tissue paper. Um, you can gel print onto gift wrap tissue paper, and I have done in previous videos, but it's a lot softer, so and it's a lot more susceptible to tearing. So I try to not use it if I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of manipulation with, with the products I'm using. Right, just a little bit of a wipe up of the plate here, just because if this was a big gel printing session, I would just pick that up with another background or something. But I just want to make sure that I don't have a huge amount of stuff on here because I want to keep the pages relatively clean. Now, I'm also not sure what I'm going to be doing with the black. And that's OK, because I don't have to use black. Um, the metallic and the white and the black are optional in this color combo. Well, in all color combos, so you can use them or not use them. I'll just clean this off a little bit. Right, so where am I up to? I have I think it's time I put some ivory in, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the ivory and do something similar um, onto the ones I set aside. So as promised, let's have a look at what we've done with the white. So, see we've got pieces down there that give us interest. Not, not too much, just enough. And what I tend to do is when I'm building up layers, I will make the larger layers, um, sorry, the larger patches will be the layers I first lie down or lay down. And then as I put more layers on top, they will get more defined, they'll become smaller, they'll so that things don't get overpowered by stuff. Okay, liking that so far. Let's put those to one side. Right, this is the pile that I said I didn't need to do anything to with the white. So I'm now going to come in with the ivory and I'm possibly going to put the ivory on all of these, but I'm unsure. We'll see as we go along. And to do this, I'm going to actually use some bubble wrap a bubble wrap just being packaging bubble wrap and I'm going to put elements in here just because I like the look of that. It, it's another visual thing. Not everything needs to be a store-bought stamp or a stencil or a mask. You can use just what you've got guys. So let's put a little bit of the ivory on. The ivory is by Stamperia. It's their paint range. I like the range of colours um, but they do act a bit like a chalk paint they do tend to dry out quite quickly. So I'm always quite conscious of that when I use them. So let's see, lie these down here. So I want to put something over there. So I'm just gonna come in, tap that on there. I'm gonna put a bit over here, because remember, they're, they're not on the same page. They're gonna be on opposite pages. Right, I like the thought of maybe breaking that up a little bit. A little bit down there and what I'm doing is I'm going to go through them once on this side and then I'll come back and put some ivory bubbles on the other side as well and then if we've got paint left on the 5x7 I'll then pull in the other load so it's not not everything is supposed to look identical I want things to look different all the way through or variations on a theme should we say I do like my bubble wrap. So I, I like the interesting pattern it gives you. And sometimes it's a whole pattern. Sometimes it's not a whole pattern. It depends on the size or the shape of the bubble wrap you're using. It depends on the quality of the bubble wrap, as in, has it been mashed when it was um, used for packaging? And does it still have its bubbles? This is, is one of my major things. Right. A bit more of that. I'm kind of concentrating on places where there might be straight lines like that because I don't want the straight lines to be honest with you. I want to break break them up, get get rid of them. 
put some down the middle here. And then that will cross over on both pages. Right, let's turn those over and start on the other side. Come on, come here. I can't pick it up today. Now, you could be doing this with any papers. I'm using coffee and tea dyed papers here, basically because those are what I had to hand. You could do this with white pages. You could do this with black pages. You could bring in some craft papers um, or maybe text or music or stuff like that. Anything like, like that will take this technique as well. I'm trying to avoid the main body of the page purely because if it's a writing journal, you need somewhere to write. Now, it could be, as I said, Paola will come in and put flips or flaps or pockets or things like that. I tend to, when I'm creating a journal, do what I call a naked journal. Like once this is all sewn together, for me, this would be a naked journal. And then within that journal, as I'm journaling, I then create what I require at the time, like do I want a pocket, do I want a tag, do I want a journal card, do I want a flip? I tend to do it as I go along. Right, I think I'm going to add this and put the slightest bit of black with it, just to add a bit of a variation. And I do mean a little bit, and I might have to whiten that up a bit, because I want the ivory to be a different sort of ivory. Yeah, I need a little bit more ivory than that because that's that's almost a dirty grey and I don't want that colour. So, And that's the reason why I have this little plate out because I like to mix on the plate. That's better. So again, just adding patches of interest just to give some different dynamic. Oops, stuck to the page. Again, we will look through all of these when they're done, guys. Am I in shot? Hopefully I'm in shot. Now, this is quite a quick process in that you tend to get very production line with it. You can, you can start off, start working on one, and before you know it, you've done the 15 sheets. The main problem I have is trying to work out when to stop because I get into the swing of doing it and I'm like, oh, that looks nice. And oh, shall I do that? And shall I do this? And then before I know it, I've I've done all of the pages and left nothing, nothing to the imagination, should I say. I'm liking this with a little bit of black in it. Too. Right. Let's pull in some of those pages we already did. Pull this colour into this. So I do hope you give this a try. This would also work with um, inks if, if you wanted to do it with inks. I suppose you could do this with watercolours because you could pick up the watercolour and transfer it across. Um, I haven't done those things but I don't see why if you're picking up a medium and putting it onto something else I don't see why it wouldn't work with paper and watercolour can be picked up, inks can be picked up. So I will put a water based ink down. I would spritz it with some water to make it more fluid and then pick it up and put it onto the page. Lots of different things. So I would just say go out and experiment, to be honest with you. Right. There's a little bit of paint left on there. So I'm going to bring in some of the white ones that we've done. And, and put the remnants of it on there. So just to see, just add variation on pages. Like here's a prime candidate. There's a really nice piece there. So if I come in with this over the top, I've now got three layers going on and it's very neutral, which is exactly what the brief is, neutral. I, I struggle with neutral though, I um, must admit it's, I'm someone who likes colour and contrast and and when I saw this theme I was like, Paula, I'm not sure, 
which is why then Paola said, well, how about we do something where we create a journal at the end of it? And I'm like, okay, I can cope with that because if I'm creating neutral pages, that made more sense to me than trying to actually create neutral artwork, which I probably do need to do at some point because the fact that I was a bit apprehensive about it makes me feel that I should open my mind a little bit and see whether I can't do it. So everything's, everything is a personal challenge when it comes to art, but it's a challenge that doesn't have rules, which is absolutely lovely. Right, let's see if I can just pick up a little bit on these last, last couple, just to clean off that plate a bit. Just a bit of grunge, just a bit of grunge. Right, I'm gonna take two seconds to clean up, just because these need to dry a few seconds before I then show them to you. So bear with me, back in a few. So all sorted and cleaned out. So let's take a look at them before I go on to the next stage. And the next stage I will do all of the pages again because I want to add some fine black lines to them. But as you can see, they're coming along really nicely. They've got interest on them. And that's, that's what we're looking for is interest. So loving these. It'd be interesting to see what Paola does with these actually because I know what I would do with them but it's always good to give stuff to another artist to see their interpretation of what you're doing. Now remember the word the title was neutrals so I'm not trying to make it absolutely dominant throughout this I'm trying to actually just build in some interest. Oh, there you go, pick up. And it does dry really quickly when you use the gel plate to create these. I'm liking that grey on there, even though it is just a darker, darker ivory, because all I did, as you saw, I just added some black to the ivory, which then made grey. Well, it's sort of a, sort of a creamy grey, actually. That one definitely needs something more on there. Some of these may do, some of these may not need more on them. Right, there you go. So my next thing I'm gonna add now is I'm gonna do another bit of mark making and I'm gonna do it with um, this piece of card. Just a bit of corrugated card. You've seen me use it before and I'm gonna come in with black. Now I've chosen to do um, thin because I don't want thick heavy lines on here. And then after that, we'll probably come in and do maybe a couple of circles on here. And then basically we will have done it. Now, I will make sure that I've used the required. So I did use white, I know that. I haven't used the cream yet. I have used ivory, I have used black, and I have used a metallic. Although I am gonna use a, another metallic as well. So I need to at some point make sure I use the cream as well. And I think that'll be the color after the black that I do. Now, when using black, I'm a lot more careful um, about where I lie them down because currently I'm just stacking them on top of each other behind me. But I know that if I'm using black, black will transfer from one to another and I'd rather it didn't do that. So behind me on the floor, is an old shower curtain which I use and I'm going to stamp stamp these lines on here and then I'm going to put it on the mat behind me so it's, and I'm going to be a little bit cautious about how many sets of these lines I put on here because I don't want the black to be dominant I just want the black to be it'll make everything else pop so it's moving on to the next one now this one definitely needs more. So if I come in down here, I'm really bad at not keeping this horizontal when I use it, but I've grown to embrace that and go, you know what? It's just what it is. I, I can't always make things balanced and straight and aligned. I would drive myself insane if I did that. So right, this is the one I felt needed some. You will also notice I'm only doing the lines horizontally. Um, that is my choice. I, I want to do that so that 
I don't start creating another lattice effect because we've already got the stamped grid on here. Which is a bit by there and a bit over there. So I think after this will come something with the cream um, I'll put on here and then we'll just have one more thing to do after that which is putting up what I consider the focal points to these so may maybe I'll put maybe I'll put a butterfly maybe I'll put a dragonfly maybe I'll well I know I'm going to put numbers on some of them but we'll see what I come up with Now for me, black dries out very quickly. Um, I also find out metallics here for me dry out very quickly as well. It could be the brand I'm using. Um, I, can't, I can't guarantee I know why. There, there are paint extenders, things you can add to paint to make the drying time slow down. You can actually buy um, what's called open paints. And an open paint means that it will it's got a longer drying time than normal. I, I think I would find, I've never used them, so I know that um, Patricia in Texas uses them because it is so hot there that she just doesn't have a working time if she doesn't do something about um, adjusting the drying time. But for me, I, I know I'd forget that they were extended and then I put my hand in it and yeah, you can only guess the mess I would get into. Now, if you do do this technique um, and you do swap it with a friend, or you could even do it for yourself, actually, and just make a journal from it, um, make sure you post photographs for me. Um, if you're going to post them on Facebook, if you tag Kerry Griffith's Creative Designs, then I'd love to see them. And also, if you tag me, and you're not a member of the Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists Facebook group, I can then share it to that group so other people can be inspired by your art as well. So, um, the group, by the way, um, is a very, very, very supportive group of people who work in different mediums. It's not just journaling, it's not scrapbooking, it's not decoupage, it's a, it's a bit of everything. I mean... We celebrate everyone's creativity, not necessarily what they create, but the act of creativity itself. And we have people there from professional artists to hobby artists to art teachers to um, part time tutors to designers. There's, there's lots of people who, if you ask, will will certainly answer questions for you. And also need to remember that the criticism there, if you receive any, will be a constructive criticism, not a deconstructive criticism um, or destructive criticism. And that's what I like about the group. They're very, as I said, supportive. We all enjoy each other's projects and we share things as we go along. There's actually swaps every month as well. So maybe you want to swap artist trading cards. Maybe you want to swap gift tags or postcards they they sort of rotate through um different genres when it comes to swaps which is where probably paula and i went oh let's swap something because i'm not always able to get the time to be part of the swaps i've done one or two but there, there's quite a lot in my calendar all right we've only got a few more to do and to be honest with you my paint is drying up so if my black dries up i'm not going to be renewing it not every page needs black on it i'd like there to be a little bit of black here and there just because it adds drama but i'm not gonna worry if i haven't managed to do it i think i've got about four pages left Put that in the middle there Maybe if I just do the middles on these last few, then there will be something that will spread across each page. What I'm also going to do is once, once I've had a bit of a clean up yet again, I will flick through those. And then once I've done them all at the end of this video, 
I will pause you, I will fold them all into half and put them into a signature just so you can see the effect when you flip through them. So obviously I'm not going to leave it in that signature to send it to Paola. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send Paola the individual pages because Paola will then be in charge of creating the journal and creating all of the extra pieces she wants in there. I mean, I know in Paola she's going to be creating tags and stuff in there, which is fabulous. I did, I did consider making some ephemera to send along, but I, I felt that would have dictated more what, what the creativity and the stylers that Paola used. And I didn't want to do that to Paola. I wanted her to just use free will to do as she likes. Right, there's very little black on there, <laughs> but that's okay. Right, back to cleanup time, guys. And then once I come back next time, we will be into the cream color, which is this, which is not going on every page. Just going to go on little patches here and there. Um, and then we'll be on to the feature pieces. So bear with me again. So back to flip through time. So I love where these are going. Some of these are absolutely, well, most of them are gorgeous. Just the last few elements to go on here now. So I'll just do a quick flip through for you. I'm keeping the flip throughs quite quick, guys, because I know at the end we will look at every single one of them at length. And it's good for you to see the different stages they go through. But you don't need to focus on every single thing because in my mind, these are just pages in the signature. So if you were to buy a digital kit and you were to put them in as a journal signature, then what you would find is they'd be designed in some way. And this is just doing something that's unique. It's, it's not a digital. I mean, I couldn't even make these into a digital because the metallics wouldn't actually show up as a digital. They, they just show up as yellow. They wouldn't show up as gold on the screen. I'm really liking this bit here. It's very grungy. I think this is where I was running out of running out of black paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cream on and I'm only going to put it on one side of each page. And I'm going to use this is possibly one of my favorite favorite stamps of my own designs. And it circles and I really like circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in cream because that's the other color I need to use. And I'm also going to look at each page and go, right, where shall I put it? Um, because what I want to do is um, almost link areas together, should we say, like here. That looks like it could be linked together. So if I pick up some of the paint and I pop it on there, that's just linked that together. Do you see what I mean? And I'm going to do this on each one of them. But I'm going to choose which side. See, that doesn't need it on there. But for me, this side needs something. Now, if I do have spare cream paint left at the end, I may well come back through and add it on the other side. That would look lovely up there. See, this one's desperate for something. In fact, I might put this on two areas of here. I know I said there was only doing one, but this page is looking a little bit vacant. Cream over the black would be nice. What does the other side of this one look like? Yeah, maybe cream over the black again would work there. Ooh, this one's desperately empty, isn't it? I've got a feeling this may need more than one, one area as well. So if I put that in there on that page, pop that on there because remember you're only seeing one side not the other side with it if there's one thing I have learnt about being creative that is to trust the process and keep doing the process until it's fully ended um, I used to a lot give up I, I would get so far and I'd be like, oh, that's going to be awful. And I used to give up. But 
as a lot of you have seen with the way I create now, especially with the gel plate actually, I tend to keep going and going and going until I believe it's done. Um, or it's an absolute horrible mess. And if it's an absolute horrible mess, then it's obvious that it's not going to be continued. And then what I'll do is I will probably put it to one side and maybe I'll come back to it at another time and add to it. Or worst case scenario, actually I'll we'll put some in that corner. Worst case scenario, I will come in and paint the entire thing a, a new color and start all over again. So I don't tend to waste stuff, but there are times when it's a case of, you know, it's just not working, but I put my best effort in first. I think I'm not going to put any more cream because I've doubled up on a few of those. So right, I'm going to put this again onto my um, damp sponge. I'm going to bring in that bit of tissue that I had on to go for cleanups. I'm going to pick up this spare paint. So I'm really happy with where these are going. Um, I, I don't know how it looks through the, the camera and I won't know until I edit. And what I will do when I edit is I'll do what I always do. I always like to keep things in real time as much as possible. But if there's a section where all I'm doing is cleaning up, guys, I'm, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me clean up. Um, sometimes I will, because I'm like, nah, it's only, only two minutes. They, they can see me clean up. But things like here, I could quite easily edit this bit out. And a lot of my videos will, when I film them, We'll go to about an hour and 20, and then once I've edited all of the indecision and the cleanup and stuff out, they usually end up about an hour long. And I think for me personally, an hour long is good enough. It, it really is. Right, let's put that on the damp cloth. Right, I'm going to start coming in now, and I'm going to stamp the copper. And I'm going to use my number stamp, and this is a PM Artist Studio butterfly design. There's two of them. And these are going to be the elements on the pages. So this is going to take a little bit of time because I want to look at each, each page as I do it. I'm going to use copper because I know that will really warm things up. So let me just go and grab the papers. Now I'm not going to flip through them because we'll flip through at the end, but I am going to turn the pile over because I put cream mainly on the other side. So this is the side where I'm going to come in and put what I would like to think are sort of kind of the focal points. Um, and I'm not going to put something on every page. I'm not going to put the same thing in the same place on every page. I'm going to look like for here, I'd really like to add my strip of numbers down there. Give it a gentle press on the back. See, that's lovely. Loving that. Now, this one is quite a busy page. Yeah, stuff on there. This is quite a busy page, but I think up here, if I take one of the butterflies, if I pop a butterfly up there, that's just enough to bring that page to life. Ugh. Right, I think for this one, I think I'm going to do numbers again, but I'm going to do numbers there, and I want to put numbers here as well. Remember, you won't see these pages at the same time because they'll be in different halves of the signature. Put a bit more paint on there. Uh, you'll notice I do keep flipping it over to see if there's anything on the other side I need to be aware of. And if I've got paint left, as I said before, I will potentially go back through them and add stuff where I see fit for it. Like I think this one needs a butterfly up here. I tend to have my butterflies flying either inwards or upwards. I don't have them flying like I wouldn't have that pointing outwards. It's just a personal thing. I don't know why that's just the way it is for me. Right, I might come in on this one and put numbers horizontally. And the thing about that is this stamp, I created it so that it can be put in any direction I choose. And also, as you can see here, 
I can add on to it just because there's about a two millimeter gap around the end. It means you can just almost line it up. If you just line it up in a row, it'll work. It will work. That's why I like that one. Um, there's another set of stamps coming out from me that is not going to be numbers. Um, it's going to be letters. And I'm so excited for that, that set to be released. I think it might, will it be what? It might actually be released on the same day that um, this video releases, actually. So um, PM Artist Studio does lives three times a week. Mariah sometimes does a fourth one on a Monday. Um, and I know they've been away on a retreat, so it, it may well get launched, the next set, on Tuesday the 2nd, which would be really nice, actually. I'm, I'm so looking forward to that set being um, released, because as you can see, I love numbers, but I also like letters. And, and I have a set of stencils out there um, called Grandfather's Letters. And I've been working with Mariah at PM Artist Studio to actually um, create a new set of stamps from those. Put a few of these around here. So they'll be on the spine. And put one of those over there because that white patch is just calling out for a butterfly in my opinion. Now um, I'm calling these a featured element um, because there's something I would look at when I look at the page but the rest of the page I'm going to do something on this side as well I know I wasn't going to but I've just looked at this page and gone I need to put something in here. Um, so these are what I would call focal points in that they they will catch your eye, but they're still not dominating the page. Right. Oh, I think they're sticking together. That one's a bit vacant. This line here bothers me. So guess what? It's getting a row of numbers down there. And I think this side, because I've got this patch here, could well do with the butterfly. Now, it will depend on how Paola puts this all together as to how the eventual look will be, um, which will be fun. I can't wait to see what Paola does with it, actually. Do I need more on that? No, space is good. I, I have a tendency to look at stuff and go, oh, there's nothing there, there's nothing there, and I keep adding and adding and adding, when, to be honest with you, it sometimes looks better just having space. Another thing I like doing with butterflies, and it is pretty much butterflies, is I like to stack them. I, li I like to have three in a row. And I might do another one of those actually with the other butterfly. Maybe by there. Let's so pop that in there. I don't know why I like the stacked butterfly thing. If you look back through my artwork, very often I will stack three of the same thing. And I know we all joke, oh, it's threes, threes and threes, but there's nothing wrong with three, threes and threes. I think I'm going to do the numbers right at the edge of this page. And I'll leave that bit, that's fine. And the last page, it needs this side. All right, I'd like a butterfly by there. Butterfly by there. And I think I'd quite like a bit of number across there. And I'd like a little bit of something down in this corner here. There you go. Right, I think we're finished. Let me just clean up some of this stuff with a bit of tissue. I need to make sure that I stamp the excess paint off the sponges um, because I don't want the acrylic paint clogging up my, um, sponge, uh, my foam stamps. 
and come in with us and pick this up and then what I'll do guys is I'm going to put you on hold for a few minutes this time it'll only be two seconds for you but I mean for me it'll be a few minutes because I want everything to dry and then I need to be able to fold it in half without paint sticking to paint okay so just bear with me on that front I just want to make sure that everything's going to be hunky-dory and I'm not I'm not ruining all of the good work because I really like where we're at with these wipe that bit off there so just while I'm doing a bit of a cleanup here so I will link um, Paola's video um, if she actually films her process for making the signature for me that will also be in the description box below if you don't know where the description box is by the way below the video there's a line of buttons like you know the share the thanks the the like the harp and all of those ones Underneath that, there's probably the start of the description of the video, and then there's usually the word more. If you tap the word more, it should open up either underneath the video or on some devices it opens up on the side. In there is where I'll put all of the links to everything in there, just so you know where they are. They're all in one place. There'll be links to everything you need to know will be there. Right, I'm going to pause you for two seconds for you, about 10 minutes for me, clear up the decks totally, and then we can share what we've made. So here we are. All I've done is I've waited for them to dry quite a bit. I'm going to let them dry a lot more before I actually mail them out to Paula. Um, but I've just folded them in half and actually put them into a signature. Obviously, I'm going to un uncreate the signature before I send it because I want Paula to make those decisions artistically as how she wants to do it. But I thought it'll just show you how the... The randomness of the painting and the stamping has come together. So I haven't done any particular order, just put them on there. So this is still a journal as far as I'm concerned that can definitely be written in. There are spaces within it to write. You could still put pockets on here. You could still do flips and flaps and things like that on here. Hopefully this is close enough for you. I'll hold it up a bit further. And see you don't have copper on every single page. You don't have gold on every single page. I mean, it's just a really nice eclectic mixture of so that I show quite like that that and there unintentional but the way it is and then sometimes you've got these plain pages and that was why I was trying not to do the same on every single page I did like adding black to the cream though or the ivory just to take it to another color now of course you could do this same technique and make a background out of them and then cut that background up into other things like tags or pockets or belly bands or journal cards, whatever you wish. So there you go, that's the front half of the signature. This is the second. I probably wouldn't put those two together because they're a bit busy, but that, that's up to Paola to deal with. I like the grunginess, but I also like the freshness that the white and the cream add to it. I love that. I love the three thing. So I think this has been a success. It's certainly been a different different turn from what I normally do. I usually make an art piece or a background or journal tags or cards or things. So this was a different idea. So thank you, Paola, for suggesting this. This was a good thing to do. I like this page. I like it with that, actually, because the calmness balances out the busyness. Now, when the paint is completely dry, and I would say normally 24 hours, you would definitely be able to write over it. I would probably use a gel pen, to be honest, um, or a permanent marker type pen. Um, just have a play. Ma maybe make a spare page if you've done if you've done one of these. Make a spare page, maybe a clean up page, just so you can test which markers and pens you use on it. So there you go. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, as I said, if you go across, if there were any of my products you liked or PM Artist Studio products that you liked in this video, if you go across and you type this code in when you're at checkout on the website, exactly like this, this will give you 10% off any order over 35 American dollars, um, which if you're having it shipped internationally, which is what I have to do, that 10% really reduces the P&P a little bit, postage and packaging. So... 
that's enough from me until next month's um, color combo. Watch out for other videos from me because I'm going to come and play with a few new things this month, I feel. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.